Hello and welcome to Progress Wrestling and today uh, not so much of a hype show but certainly a recap show uh, myself and my co-host who I'll be introducing very soon will be looking back at the extraordinary happenings from Super Strong Style Day 3 uh, but uh, before we get started uh, I'm just going to introduce my, my co-host, my good friend, the mad dog Mike Angus himself. How you doing Mike? All good, Jonas. Yeah, partying it up as always, my friend. Ready to uh, have a chat about Super Strong Style 16. What an amazing, uh, what an amazing weekend we had on that May Bank holiday weekend, and then uh, there's so much still to come this year from Progress Wrestling. So uh, let's get down to it, and uh, we'll chat it all out. Absolutely. But uh, just a quick thank you to our friends, uh, Defy Wrestling, um, over in the states, and of course they had a, a big show just before AEW Forbidden Door this past Sunday in Toronto. Um, and of course uh, we are referring to this one here. And uh, of course they had earlier on in the day Smash Wrestling and Femme Fatales. And then at 3 p.m. over in Toronto uh, on Sunday there was Defy and Progress. And of course uh, there were six amazing matches that happened. Uh, from the rec room in Toronto, including our very own Charles Crowley, uh, the Bollywood uh, Bollywood boys there who uh, who uh, picked up a, a nice little win to retain their Defy Tag Championships, and of course Spike Treve with his Progress World Championship on the line against Artemis Spencer there. Um, but a uh, good showing from uh, some of the Progress regulars, and of course our very own World Champion, and of course uh, the spectacular one. Um, any, any kind of words there for our friends over at Defy? And uh, obviously there are some clips and some photos out there, but uh, some good results all round for our Progress boys. Definitely, it sounds like an amazing afternoon in Canada, and of course, uh, you know, Forbidden Door was a was a crazy show. Some of our other wrestlers on show, obviously, Will Osprey picking up his uh, a big win there over Kenny Omega. So, uh, huge uh, ramifications for that one for what's going to be happening later on in the summer, and of course, from uh, the Defy Progress show possible ramifications for August 26th when it's clobbering yeah. time in London and we've obviously got to fight over with us on that day and there's uh, you know there's been some interesting rumblings uh, in the mix Jonas from what happened over in Canada so uh, looking forward to uh, to seeing what ends up happening from those Absolutely. And uh, of course, there, there may well, there probably will be some spoilers throughout the course of this recap show. Um, but uh, of course, we'll be focusing most of our time on Super Strong Star 16, day three, the culmination, the climax of what was uh, one of the very best Super Strong Star tournaments progress wrestling has ever held. Uh, and one partial spoiler now is that we still have our reign in defending Sovereign Lord, the vulture of progress, Spike Treve, still the reigning progress world champion there. Over 300 days, it's got their 12 successful title defences. I think it, that win over Artemis Spencer makes it 13. I think there's possibly one from Dubai last December against uh, Axel Tisha, if I'm not mistaken. So 14 in there as well, defense. yeah. Uh, unbelievable and an incredible reign, well over 300 days. Uh, will he get to a full year? We'll have to see. But uh, Spike Treve uh, marches on as our sovereign lord, as our progress world champion, Mike. Yeah, exactly. The vulture and what a year he's had. You know, we're uh, definitely the, uh, I think, the top heel in the business at the moment. From you know, who I've seen, he's absolutely brilliant. Um, everywhere he goes, the, uh, the 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 fans hate him, and uh, you know, he's he's in. There's an instant dislike when you meet Spike Treve, uh, and you know, it's very easy for him to convey that, and uh, and you know, just uh, the way he talks in the ring, and. Uh, oh. You know, the disdain he had for Connor Mills over the uh, Super Strong Style 16 weekend was was palpable. You know, he uh, he couldn't stand him, and he uh, and you know he dealt with him uh, how he how he does, and that uh, you know destroys people. Spike Treve is absolute beast, and uh, you know obviously Car um was was such a threat to him, and then he's still re recovering now. And um, you know, best wishes to Car. Obviously, um, the GoFundMe going very well for Car mm. Noir. Um, so thank you to everyone who's donated there and uh, to help with that specialist treatment the car has to receive due to the uh, injury sustained, obviously at the hands of Spike Treve as well in uh, in heavy metal back in uh, back the other month in the ballroom. So uh, yeah, of course, Spike a formidable opponent for for anybody. And obviously, as we're going to be chatting now, the winner of Super Strong Style 16 is going to get their chance to take on Spike. And as he said himself. Are. They're going to get the chance to, to face him and lose, he said. So he's already predicting his own future there. So, uh, yeah, we'll have to see what happens there. 
<laughs> Absolutely. Well, uh, once again, thank you to our friends over at Defy. We look forward to seeing you in London uh, for Defy and uh, Progress. Uh, two separate shows. We're going to flash up that slide one more time because uh, tickets are already on sale. Uh, just go to progresswrestling.com forward slash tickets. Uh, it will take you through to the Dice FM app where you can get your, your tickets or your combo tickets for both shows. Obviously, you've got Defy, The Splendid and The Vile starting at noon on Sunday the 26th. Uh, Saturday the 26th, my apologies. And then that same day, that same afternoon, 4 p.m. Progress, it's clobbering time. And we will be looking towards the end of this recap show at uh, what's been announced so far and some of the recent happenings. And of course, Mike has alluded to that um, uh, show indeed. But uh, thank you to our friends over at Defy. Congratulations to our sovereign Lord on making it over 300 days. But let's have a look at Super Strong Style uh, 16, day three. And of course, uh, scrolling along the bottom of the screen is where you can sign up to progress on demand. Day one, day two, and day three, all three days of this year's Super Strong Style tournament are up. Of course, day one from the Dome where you had the eight first round matches. Day two from the Electric Ballroom with the uh, quarterfinal matches and uh, all them other feature matches, including that fantastic uh, ladder match between Sunshine Machine and the Smoking Aces. And of course, uh, day three, which we'll be highlighting now, but uh, go to progresswrestling.com forward slash watch. Uh, click the on-demand link. Uh, sign up for your two weeks free trial today. Now, don't don't delay. Watch his first, of course, um, and then go and sign up. Get your two weeks free trial and then enjoy all three days of this year's Super Strong Style. Um, but uh, just to cover off some of the matches, and of course, we open day three uh, with the ups and downs battle royal. Uh, Simon Miller's ups and downs battle royal, of course. And uh, I think one of the highlights of the whole weekend for me uh, was seeing a man like Dalboy <laughs> back in a progress ring, Mike. Um, an absolute fantastic. I, 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 I think uh, Darius should make that a permanent gimmick or a semi public, maybe in a progress ring, but there were so many happenings. Um, obviously, you got to action there from Robbie X, Leon Slater, Maggot, of course, Charles Crowley. Uh, and, and of course, we had the long awaited. Um, encounter, you could say, uh, not quite a one on one encounter, but they did mix it up in this battle role between Bullet and Big Demo. And of course, it came down to Tate and Rampage Brown, uh, but in an incredible way. Uh, I couldn't think of a better way to kick off day three of this year's Super Strong Style. Uh, give us your recollections of that one, Mike. It was absolutely wild and so much fun. Yeah, oh yeah, no, so exciting and uh, amazing to have uh, So Carl Val back on comms for day three. Uh, some of the banter between her and Ollie Spring about uh, about Nigel as well, and, and some of the other stuff was hilarious. But uh, and I, I really did giggle when they were calling uh, Rampage Brown Ram Rammers on uh, on on the commentary there, and I thought they were both going to be in trouble for it. So uh, yeah, it's, he still hasn't got him yet. So, so <laughs> hopefully they'll be fine. But uh, what a battle royal it was! Uh, you know, when you when you've got people like Nick Wayne, uh, Erie, uh, even Leon Slater, all in, in a battle royal together, just so exciting. And then, um, you know, it bro broke down straight away with Bullet deciding he was going to interject and throw himself in there. And then him and Big Demo eliminated each other. So it was chaos all over the place. Um, as you said, man like Del Boy, yeah, perfect, perfect gimmick for Darice because he's, you know, he's always the first at the merch stand. So, you know, that man like Del Boy is it's not, it's not really a gimmick. It is him. His character. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> what? Uh, what what's the uh, What's the TV show I coming to your TV comes. soon? <laughs> Sorry, go ahead, Mike. Yeah, no, just saying. Maggot and Crowley were reunited as well, and they were seemed to be getting on so well, and then they ended up uh, biting each other's fingers, and then they there were we on the ring for the whole match, and still fighting out the back at the at the end of the match after it all finished. They were still under the ring, causing chaos. Um, as well, Tate Mayfair's was not a happy bunny after this one. He had a right hissy fit. And one of my favourite parts is when he, uh, I don't know if you've watched it back, Jonas, but uh, at the very end of the match, um, he slams a chair down on the stage as hard as he can. It pops up in the end and lands perfectly open on the stage. So uh, we'll have to get him <laughs> setting the seats up before the next show. If he can do that all day long, that's a special trick. That. <laughs> hey, that, that That's a trick we didn't see during the Nigel McGuinness Magic Show, for sure. But uh, that could be uh, a separate act all of his own. <laughs> Magic Fingers himself was uh, was back in the house, you know, for the next match. So, uh, yeah, that was uh, some of the amazing magic on the night before this was such, such a good night. And, uh, of course, yeah, Tate needs to uh, work that magic trick with the chair into his repertoire. If he can do that again, I'm not sure he'd be able to, but uh, 
pretty awesome when I, when I noticed that little clip. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, go and check that opener out on uh, Progress on Demand. Uh, a great way to kick off day three. And then we had the, the two semi-finals of... Progress Super Strong Star 16, of course, the first of which Luke Jacobs versus Mark Haskins, an incredible match. And as we said in last week's recap show, Mike, Luke Jacobs, he has this knack of doing very, very well in tournaments. Previously, um, the winner of the, the the Atlas title tournament, of course, uh, last year, I believe it was last year. Um, and then, of course, the year before that, uh, the winner of the Natural Progression Series, getting to the semi-final of this year's Super Strong style. Um, but I, I, I don't think he really had in his plans a certain Mark Haskins, and Mark Haskins had other ideas, Mike. Yeah, and it's just one of those things with uh, with Luke. He's done so well uh, getting through tournaments in the past, but th- but this one he'd had a couple of tough matches against mm. big guys. You know, he'd fought Rampage Brown and the one before, and we thought we'd pick he'd pick a bit of a knock. And then as he's taken on Haskins, who you know with such an emphatic return, he hadn't been at progress since unboxing uh, 2019 or something like that. You know, he's been away for four years. It was an emphatic return, and uh, he is a tactician and a technical wrestler in the ring, and he spotted that injury that Luke Jacobs had got the previous day and really honed in on it and worked on that leg. And uh, and obviously, it was the uh, the death lock that, um, that Haskins won that match with, uh, which put Luke out of the tournament, and that was focusing on that bad leg that Luke had hurt. So, yeah, no surprises there, but... Uh, you know, Haskins, brilliant wrestler, and uh, he just picked up on that injury that Luca p- had picked up in the tournament and uh, and focused on it, you know, like the cerebral assassin himself that, uh, you know, very clever and, um, yeah, spotted that weak point and really exploited it there and picked up a big win to get himself yeah. into the final. Getting himself through to the final. If you think about who Mark Haskins picked off to get uh, through to the final, obviously Leon Slater in day one, no uh, no easy feat there. Obviously one of the, the brightest um, young stars on the UK scene. Um, round two, Charles Crowley in what we said last week was a star-making performance for, for Charles Crowley. And then, of course, picking off uh, another young, I think, Luke, Luke Jacobs, what, 23, 24 years old, easily one of the best, most fiercest uh, and most feared competitors on the UK scene. Um, so uh, kind of the, the old guards, shall we say, the originals, uh, Mark Haskins really kind of showing the, the new guard, the younger progress talent, how it's done getting through to the final there. The second semi final. Um, obviously, Full Metal Lycos, Kid Lycos, going up against the first ever Progress World Champion, dating all the way back to Chapter 1, uh, 11 years ago, Nathan Cruz, of course. And uh, we've seen Nathan Cruz put on some incredible displays uh, during Super Strong Style. Uh, round 1, Round 2 against uh, Will Ospreay, of course. This semi-final match against Kid Lycos was no different. Um, it was hard-hitting. Nathan Cruz obviously came into the tournament to make a point, maybe with a bit of a chip on his shoulder um, and uh, maybe a bit of an attitude that he deserved to be there and he deserved to go all the way. But uh, Kid Lycos proved why he's uh, probably one of the most, uh, dare I say, improved wrestlers on a progress roster for the last 12 months or so. Um, Certainly has to back in from the fans now, from the progress faithful, especially in the ballroom. Um, This was another great match and another great semi-final. Yeah, and it was a really interesting dichotomy in this one whereby uh, Nathan Cruz's behaviour seemed to get worse and worse as the tournament went on with some of his Eddie Guerrero-style antics. He yeah. obviously got Will Ospreay eliminated from the tournament with a, you know, wrapping a chair around his own head. And then he was up for much of the same in this matchup where he, he was up to all sorts. He had the um, the initial, the progress staff, and then he's got the uh, got a chair into play. But the interesting thing about Lycos was his behaviour has improved so much over the last year, but... On this occasion, he did fight fire with fire because uh, the tricks backfired on Nathan Cruz because uh, Lycos had, had used them all before himself. So as yeah. soon as uh, Cruz has pulled one trick and wrapped a chair around his head, Lycos actually hits him with the chair and then puts puts it in his hands and lies down on the floor himself. So uh, some amazing, uh, you know, Eddie Guerrero esque antics there, which is always amazing to see. You know, so um, yeah, brilliant stuff from from both the guys there and a tough another tough battle. Um, and Nathan Cruz obviously. The distress to go out the tournament and uh, Lycos, amazingly, um, you know, to the surprise of, of many who were in attendance and to the, uh, the team, makes it through to the final there, which is a huge result for him. And um, it was interesting to see as well, um, 
his getting to the final was almost Bret Hart esque, King of the Ring '93, because he um, used different maneuvers to uh, you know to, to fight his way to the finish uh, in each match. Uh, obviously, beating Big Demo with the um, the Brain Buster, finally finally hitting that Brain Buster, and then he used the uh, Serotonin Bay. It was against Nick Wayne that uh, right off the middle rope, and they uh, planted Nick Wayne to to beat you know one of the future greats, isn't it, Nick Wayne? You can't deny that. And of course, then the um, he used like some sort of crazy, uh, crazy like Lycos esque roll up in this one on Cruz and caught uh, caught Nathan with like uh, with a little bit of a roll up there. And uh, I think the fans at the end of that match were chatting death by roll up, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> wow, they all count, don't they? Even these cheeky roll ups, you get the one, two, three, and advance to the finals. But uh, there we go, and, and, and oh, very well spotted there, Mike. You've uh, astutely kind of picked out and uh, the correlation there with Bret Hart from uh, one of the very best pay per views and one of the very best displays thirty years ago, pretty much. Uh, Was it? Oh my God. Yeah, thirty Jeremy years ago. Now. <laughs> uh, June 93 and now we're in uh, June 2023 which always doesn't seem real but uh, and if you want to know what Mike's on about go and check out day one day two and now day three to see exactly how Kid Lycos picked up them wins in the three different ways um, making his way to the final and we'll talk about the final very very soon but uh, a very impressive display but I also want to give credit to Nathan Cruz uh, a wonderful return back to a progress ring as it was many of the other progress originals like Osprey, like Mark Haskins, uh, and we'll be talking about uh, Osprey and Haskins very soon. And then, still in the first half of the show, we had this to uh, main event to close out half one or part one of uh, day three of Super Strong Style and uh, the much talked about, the much anticipated Clock Strikes Midnight match. And before I bring up some of the matches, I mean, I interviewed Nina Samuels maybe a month ago, and she said that for many weeks. That was the first and only match that was advertising the whole of Super Strong Style for this year. That kind of carried the weight um, and uh, kind of sold the tickets, essentially, for what was a tremendous three-day event. And uh, I think Nina Samuels, Alexis Falk, and I'm sure you'll agree, more than delivered with this match, more than delivered with the creativity, the imagination, the wild antics. Um, there's uh, Alexis coming out for her awesome entrance, Nina Samuels for her superstar um, appearance, her superstar entrance, of course. But the match soon got wild. It soon got crazy. But as I'm sure you'll um, kind of remind us in a moment, Mike, uh, it did get very, very crazy uh, towards the end and uh, a very, very climactic end there. But it started off with just basic stipulations, a uh, one-on-one, -on -one and which uh, kind of progressed into something a little bit more uh, adventurous um, every time the clock randomly struck midnight. But uh, give us your recollections of that one. Honestly, one of my highlights of the three days of Super Strong Style. Yeah, an amazing match. And, you know, we knew the tournament was going to be strong, uh, Super Strong Star 16. We brought in some amazing competitors for that. Nigel had, had selected some of the best from around the world. Um, obviously, we had the on day two, the uh, the tag team match that we're looking forward to. And then on day three, um, you, know, the, the, you know, the ladies had uh, fought this one up a long time ago. And it was something that they, you know, that Alexis really wanted to show what she could do and it was uh it's an amazing matchup and it was uh you know so well orchestrated uh, by everyone involved and just alexis and nina went out there and had one of the best wrestling matches you'll see the stipulation changes added to it even more the amazing entrances the ladies had um it literally is a must watch match and um and it and it was uh you know, I just just amazing encounter between two uh two women who are at the absolute top of their game you know nina samuels and ended up going through a table off the top. That was brutal. And um, you know, Alexis the glass Sippler, the glass Sippler. Open with the old uh, with the old stiletto. But yeah, we had a singles match, we had a tables match, we had a, a first blood match. Uh, and then as soon as just well, it was just before Alexis got busted open with that stiletto, it switched to a submission match, didn't it? So that made Nina even more angry. And then, of course, it just when you thought it couldn't go any further, and uh, Nina Samuels had gone through that table on the outside. She's about to be counted out, and on the uh, on the eight count, I think it was, it changed to a death match just to finish finish the match off with some added chaos. So uh, I know Alexis is uh, you know well versed in that sort of thing from uh, being the TNT Women's Champion, of course, up in Liverpool, uh, TNT Extreme Wrestling, but. Um, I think this just shows the extreme she was willing to go to show what she could do there. And, uh, you know, a massive, 
a massive victory for her. And then, you know, but don't take anything away from Nina Samuel. She showed how strong and tough she can be with the beating she took in this one. And, uh, you know, such an entertaining match and definitely one I'll be going back to watch again. And uh, I'm sure, uh, you know, a, a lot of fans have asked, can we put that out for them to see? And it's available now on demand, so make sure to check it out. You know, it's uh, definitely worth watching that one. There we go. Get your two weeks free trial and check it out tonight after watching this one. Uh, but a tremendous match. Um, and uh, like I say, it lived up to all the expectation. It lived up to all the hype and then some. Uh, don't just take my word for it. Don't take Mike's word for it. Go and check it out yourself. Um, and then we kicked off half two or the second part of day three of Super Strong Style. And wow, I mean, just look at this graphic here. Uh, the Swords of Essex, Will Ospreay, the returning Paul Robinson, Callum Newman um, against his, well, dare I say it, close personal friends, or maybe they were, uh, Danny Black, Joe Lando, Maverick Mayhew. Mike, oh, this match had everything, didn't it? And uh, I think with this one, it was it was uh, crazy. Um, it had all the manoeuvres you would expect, but it had kind of the, the rough element to it, the fighting, the brawling, the hard hitting, the chops. Um, and, uh, yeah, th these two teams, we, we speak about how amazing the chemistry is between the 0-1-2-1 and CPF. I want to see the Swords of Essex and CPF again. Um, uh, add into the mix, the 0 one 2 one Yes, please. Thank you very much. Um, but these six individuals lived up to the, the, the hype, lived up to their billing. Um, it had kind of a, a main event feel, of course, with Will Ospreay being part of it, wearing jeans as well. So he knew that he was in for a battle. He knew that he was in for a war, not a wrestling match. Um, and uh, I'd say the CPF boys, they can hold their head up uh, with pride with how they really took it to the Swords of Essex. But it did leave Kalanuma with a, a, a dilemma at the end. Um, and uh, like I say, you'll have to check out day three on demand to see what we're on about. But once again, Mike, I'm going to throw it over to you. Um, a match that has to be seen to be believed. Yeah, of course, John. As it was, it was all over the show, all over the ballroom. There's people getting put through all the chairs. There was, there was just some amazing moments in this match with it. You know, one move into another, move into someone in an Oz cutter into you know the next thing. And there were some things I'd never seen before in this oh, one: yeah. reversals and all sorts of stuff. Um, and you know, Callum Newman flipping through the bottom rope to the outside was just absolutely insane. Right towards the end of the match, and uh, poor Mav. Right near the end, took a took a royal beating, but um, yeah, it was brutal. There was some real venom, uh, some real bad blood running through this one. Um, I just think uh, the action in this one, perfect to come back from interval to, to a match like this. It's just uh, you know, it's very tough for anyone else to go on after this match because this uh, this one was just all over the place. The audience was so involved, and you can see there that the passion involved in the guys are. Uh, you know, really riled up there, and it's uh, you know was a, an amazing matchup. One you've definitely got to watch. This this whole show was uh, was just absolutely top notch stuff. Really, really good. Absolutely, and uh, I think we have to mention that after the match, uh, we got a, a very um, emotional, heartfelt promo from Paul Robinson, um, and uh, you know. <sighs> I think for the, for those that remember Paul Robinson when he was involved in Progress Wrestling a few years back would know what what a passionate wrestler he was. He wore his kind of heart on on his sleeve, and of course he was the the Progress and, and still is the Progress Proteus champion. And well, he reminded uh, us of that this day, didn't he, Jonathan? Said you know, so it looks like there's a possibility you might see that uh, you might see him bringing that belt back to Progress. We'll have to see what happens in the very near future. But uh, a couple of things we haven't mentioned, Jonas was there. Uh, Go ahead. Some of the, some a couple of interesting bits. One one thing I did notice earlier on was um, when Lycos was facing Nathan Cruz, um, Nigel on commentary was absolutely on the side of Nathan Cruz, and some of the comments from Nigel in that one were absolute gold dust. At one point, he called uh, he called Kid Lycos Kid Kid shithead. <laughs> So, I did, I did, I did. Re yeah, I watched that I'm one not back. Sure. He, that. he might have been thinking of like the ultimate shit wolf, but uh, yeah, kid shit. Uh, <laughs> so that's a new one for us. And um, that's a t shirt well, all day long. That's a t shirt exactly, all day long. Exactly. I think so. <laughs> Magic Fingers himself is, is pointing the finger there. But uh, and as well, um, some great commentary as well from um, from SoCal Val when Nina Samuels in the trash can in the uh, in the uh, Clock Strikes Midnight match, and she calls her Nina the Grouch. I just thought that was <laughs> masterful stuff. So good. And uh, one other thing we didn't mention, actually, was the uh, 
you've got to have a raffle at wrestling, Jonas. We have the Super Strong Style 16 title on the line, a very special right. belt that had been designed especially for the day, and we raffled it away. And a big shout-out to our fan, James, who won that one, and we, uh, he was in the ring just after the interval to receive his, uh, his title belt there. So an amazing moment for him. And uh, just a really nice moment for everyone involved, really, um, for, him, for him to uh, win that belt. That was a great moment. And, uh, you know, thanks to everyone who got involved in the raffle. I think it was uh, good good fun, that one. And, um, and of course, CPF, what will happen to them now with, uh, you know, they sort of left without Cal at the end there. So, uh, and uh, I did ring announce for Callum Newman at TNT last week. And uh, I definitely ring announced him as being part of the Swords of Essex rather than being part of CPF. Ooh. So there you go. We'll have to see what happens going forward in the future. Well, we'll I don't think we've out. seen the end of that story. I don't think we've seen, seen the end of that story. But uh, I mean, you know, I'd be kind of recollecting on some of your kind of personal highlights, and especially the commentary from Nigel McGuinness and uh, SoCal Val there. Um, but uh, before day three, and I don't think this is kind of aired anywhere, or if it has, I haven't seen it yet. But uh, uh, we had um, Sunshine Machines. Second annual rock, paper, scissors tournament, which was so much fun. And that Amazing. Was all the more reason why you have to be there, get there early. Uh, people run into their seats and, of course, wanted to be part of rock, paper, scissors. Um, Anything them guys host, John, <laughs> just turns into, into such a laugh. I know um, in the coming weekend, it's it's uh, Money in the Bank and SmackDown, and obviously WWE are over in the next week in the UK. So um, uh, I think. Uh, I'm pretty sure Sunshine Machine have got some antics planned for down in London again. Uh, maybe some sort of another bottomless brunch or something like they did in Cardiff. But uh, those parties can just be so wild. Um, make sure you check out Hooked on Wrestling and the different parties they're doing and, and stuff linked up with Wrestle Tours and Progress as well because uh, you never know who might show up at one of those things and uh, or what might show up. I've heard uh, there's going to be an opportunity to have your picture with the Progress Championship at these uh, at these parties as well. So, uh, you know, that's just something extra to add to your weekend when you're already down in London. Get along to that and uh, party, party it up with the uh, with the Sunshine Machine, guys. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, talking of that, um, that raffle prize, the signed uh, World Championship, Progress World Championship, I had the honour of guarding that um, for several hours uh, at the merch stand on day three. Beautiful bout, beautiful bout. I was tempted to kind of put it around my waist, but uh, no, no, we kept it there on display for all to see and sell a few tickets. And uh, But we got two more matches to talk about, Mike. And of course, uh, this is a match that had built over day one uh, when, of course, we saw Connor Mills uh, come out of nowhere, attack the Sovereign Lord, attack Spike Trevay. Day two, when the roles were reversed and uh, I think Connor Mills went through the, the, the mill, literally being uh, attacked and beaten to set up the eventual match on day three. And uh, it was, of course, Connor Mills uh, against the Sovereign Lord. Now, this was a, an interesting match, um, not the type of match that Connor Mills would usually have in a wrestling ring. And I think uh, Spike Trevay once again pulled out every tactic, every trick that he could to keep Connor Mills down. Um, but uh, this was a really fun, entertaining match. It went to the outside, that devastating pile driver um, outside on the hard wooden floor at the electric ballroom. Um, I, don't, I think it was a non-title match, if I remember rightly, so the championship yeah. wasn't on the line. That was one thing Spike made sure to fit yeah. in there, wasn't it? Non-title, yeah. He slipped that one in there, didn't he, yeah, to cover he himself. There, maybe. But that but, power um, time on the outside that you just showed, Jonas, was absolutely brutal. And I think that was the beginning of the end, to be honest, for, uh, yeah. for Connor Mills. Once he once he did his head on the deck there, that was it. He got back in the ring and uh, the Tower of Silence, it was all she wrote. But... Um, Connor, you know, with a great effort, great to see him back in a progress ring over the weekend. And he, uh, you know, gave a great display of himself for the fans. I know the fans wanted him back and he was there and it was, uh, gave a good display of himself. But uh, the Sovereign Lord is just on a different perch at the moment, a different level than everyone else. He's, um, you know, he's towering above what, uh, what other people can do in the ring and outside it as well with the... Uh, you know, some of the stuff he comes out with and, there's, you know, his promos and things. So just, uh, it's going to be hard to knock him off his perch, to be honest. So we'll have to see in the next couple of months what happens. But uh, a great, uh, not a tight defence, but a great win for um, Spike Trevay there. Absolutely. And I think if we ever see Connor Mills in a progress ring again, 
he'll be looking for maybe a little bit of uh, come up and say a little bit of revenge, maybe with a championship on the line. We will have to see. And I've actually, I'm, I'm going to be speaking to Connor Mills live on my uh, weekly live show, Wrestling with Jonas, um, in a few days' time. So uh, get get the lowdown, get the first hand uh, point of view from Connor Mills um, when you tune in live next Monday. And then, of course, we had the final of Super Strong Style 16, the 2023 tournament. And of course, we spoke about the two semi-finals earlier. Uh, Mark Haskins going through, Full Metal Lycos, Kid Lycos going through. Um, Mike, this match was dramatic, exciting, nerve-wracking. I don't think I had any fingernails left by the end of this one. Um, it, it, it gave us everything you would expect and everything you would want from a final of Super Strong Style. And uh, sometimes finals of tournaments don't live up to the billing. You've had a wonderful tournament beforehand. Sometimes the finals are a little bit anticlimactic, a little bit of a letdown. This was the best match of the tournament, in my opinion. And we saw some amazing matches. Um and of course, we did have Full Metal Lycos with his hand raised there. Nigel McGuinness as the special guest referee. Of course, he uh, hosted the show, gave us all the 16 entrants. He uh, commentated and he refereed. Uh, he told me in an interview afterwards that uh, he should have put up the ring, take it down, sold some merch, and he would have done absolutely everything. But he refereed that main event. And what an occasion it was. The streamers came in. Um, the, the problem child, Kid Lycos 2, came in to support and congratulate his uh, his friend, his best friend there. But um, what what a very, very memorable occasion, a very deserving winner, a very popular winner. As I said, John, as it was almost, uh, you know, Bret Hart-esque from, uh, from Lycos with his uh, different, different ways of winning. And uh, he, he also Brett Hart asked was the fact Haskins, you know, used his uh, his death lock all the way through to the final as well. And yeah. it looked at one point as if he was going to pick up the win over Lycos with that. He was locked in that hole for a very long time during the match. And, uh, you know, Lycos just, just managed to get to the ropes. But, uh, you know, it wasn't without some chaos this match as well with uh, Haskins pretending that Lycos 2 had tripped him on the outside at one point, getting uh, Lycos 2 ejected. So uh, there could be no... Um, excuses saying that Lycos Jim were in uh, you know causing chaos together this time it was uh it was all on his own um Lycos um ultimate Lycos the uh the ultimate shit house in this one and uh he was uh he did so well and um you know it showed it was a real testament to how tough both these guys are because this was a bit of a war of attrition this one they'd had both had four matches in three days and it was one of their matches where the pace was still high. You know, there was, there was, you know, a decent velocity to it. And then these two guys both were, uh, you know, you could tell they'd been battered and beaten. And then, uh, you know, both there was times when they were both clinging on and uh, trying to pick up that victory. And in the end, it was uh, Lycos who managed to get through it. But, uh, you know, what a story that this guy's got to tell now after, uh, you know, from the, uh, from the Dome, Return of the Fly, uh, fruit, fruit of this moment, you know, the tournaments, it was just, uh, when you watch it back, it was just an amazing moment. You can see as well, the whole crowd in the ballroom were right behind like us by the end of it. They um, they absolutely loved what he was doing out there and uh, loved the story that was told. And uh, amazing testament to show um, what a great wrestler he is and, uh, you know, well-deserved victory. And then seeing some of the comments afterwards from, uh, you know, wrestlers far and wide, you know, what's congratulating like us, it just shows um a worthy winner and uh, haskins unfortunate in defeat there but uh you know also showed what a top top caliber wrestler that he is and uh you know it was a fitting way to end the tournament what a bank holiday weekend and as the streamers were flying in and uh lycos held his head high you know it was a rare nigel mcginnis was there obviously you know selected all the combatants and then he's there right at the finish as well to hold up uh lycos's hand what a moment and uh, one that I'm sure Kid Like Us won't ever forget. Um, amazing moments. And now, going forwards, John, as he has got the opportunity to face um, when, whenever he wants, whoever may very well be the champion. Who knows? He might take that opportunity on August the 26th for clobbering time, or he might use it at a different time. We'll have to see. But it's uh, it's all fallen into place for a kid like us now. Absolutely. What what a story, what a journey, what a redemption story it was, and uh, what a worthy winner 
Um, but uh, let's have a look ahead to August then, because we've mentioned it a couple of times. Of course, our friends over at Defy will be coming over here to the UK, to London, to the Electric Ballroom, the Splendid and the Vile, 12 noon on Saturday the 26th. And then, of course, you've got Progress Wrestling. It's clobbering time. Already announced for Defy. Um, their, their former world champion, of course, Nick Wayne, will be competed, competing um, at the Splendid and the Vile, the 12 noon show. And then, of course, Mike, um, we had a certain individual that we've just spoken about, got to the final there, Super Strong Style, went on uh, BBC Radio last night. Um, and we're talking about Mark Haskins to announce that on August the 26th, Defy Wrestling, the Splendid and the Vile, he wants to take on their world champion. He wants to take on their current champion, Kenta. Um, when Defy come over to the UK, he wants to be that challenger for the Defy Championship. Um, what what a huge bit of breaking news there, Mike. What a huge um uh, opponent for Kenta and what a huge opportunity for Mark Haskins and what a fantastic championship match that would be when it's made official. Amazing, amazing. Yeah, I'm just gonna say about Haskins, you know, in that match, um against Lycos in the main event, it's obviously must watch, but some of the stuff, you know, all the all the matches that um, Lycos had won, all the moves he'd used to win his other matches, he used against Haskins in that match as well, and Haskins kicked out or or didn't submit, you know, and carried on the match, so uh, just goes to show what a competitor he is, and how exciting the fact that Kenta could be in the UK um, for August 26th. Um, I was lucky enough to see Kenta in action against um, Anora Suzuki, and um Impact Wrestling, um, when we were over there for the Impact versus NGPW uh, event at WrestleMania. And, um, you know, if he brings anything like what he brought on that day to uh, to the UK and our amazing fans in the Electric Ballroom get to see that, that'll just be, uh, you know, something so special. And obviously there's going to be so many great talents over in the UK for August 27th, for the day after, for AW. Um, you know, you just never know who might show up or what could happen on those days. The five got such a loaded roster. The progress roster is absolutely stacked at the moment. You know, anybody who you want to see could show up on those days. Absolutely. Uh, and then we uh, flick ahead the same day, 4 p.m., <coughs> same venue, Electric Ballroom. And of course, it's, uh, it's clobbering time. And a few people that have already been, a few extraordinary talents that have already been announced for it's clobbering time. David Boy Smith Jr., of course, um, and uh, quite possibly his progress wrestling debut. The current women's champion, Lana Austin, will be there defending her gold against whom we will have to find out. Uh, the youngest in charge, Leon Slater, will be competing. And, of course, the spectacular one, uh, having recently been victorious in a Defy ring over in Toronto this past Sunday, will be competing for progress at its clobbering time. Uh, so some extraordinary talent that have already been announced many more to be announced in the coming days, weeks, um, as we get uh, closer to August the 26th and the matches will be announced as well. And uh, Mike, we got this t-shirt here, which is available on pre-order. Just go to progresswrestling.com and uh, you can get your very own I Was There, It's Clobbering Time Progress Wrestling t-shirt, of course. Um, but uh, a lot to look forward to. That 4pm show is going to be amazing. And that t-shirt looks pretty sweet. Oh, mate, um, well, hopefully I'll be able to pick one of them up, eh? And, um, yeah, I was going to say it'll be uh, a great show. You can already see, you know, great to see that uh, David Boy Smith Jr. is going to be involved, someone whose career I've followed right from the very start. I was lucky enough to meet him back in about 2006, 2007. And, you know, I've always enjoyed his work when he was in WWE, obviously in the uh, tagging with... Uh, TJ Wilson. Um the exact name I was gonna say, but then I was gonna give him his <laughs> I was gonna give his wrestling name. But what I'd stalled on was the fact that uh, I was only watching Stewie from Stu's Wrestling Podcast interviewing him the other day, saying that was one of his uh, his favorite interviews he's done. So uh, yeah, just got caught up a moment on that one. But yeah, amazing. And obviously saw him in MLW, and then when he was uh, did, did the Josh Barnett Blood Sports as well, and some of his. Uh, he did a quite a lot of uh, sort of fight training, like MMA style training mm. as well. There was one stage where he was training with Dave Batista. So, uh, you know, somebody I respect so much, he's worked at his craft so hard and, uh, you know, he's deserving to be on such a high level. So uh, looking forward to seeing him make his progress debut. And obviously the three wrestlers that have been announced so far, obviously the women's champion, Lana Austin, an absolute superstar, you know, somebody who uh, you need to come and see. Leon Slater is one of the hottest rising stars in the world. 
the youngest yeah. in charge. Amazing, amazing wrestler. Looking forward to seeing who he's going to be facing. And of course, Charles Crowley, the spectacular twat who is on there, just tearing through um, Britain and well, the entire world. Everywhere he goes, he's uh, you know gets one of the wildest reactions from the crowd, whoever it be to his dancing or to whatever he's wearing or any of his antics that he's up to. He's uh, he's he's such a character, Crowley, that. Um, you know, those four alone is, would be enough for me to purchase a ticket if I was, uh, you know, getting along to that show. I think I will. Uh, I'll definitely be there anyway. But, um, you know, if I was uh, somebody looking to buy a ticket, I'd be looking out for those guys being on the card. And that'd be enough for me. And uh, with the rumours of Kenta versus Haskins, that's uh, a match that, you know, you've got to see it. You've got to be there in the ballroom that day and see that one. That's going to be amazing. Yeah, get your combo tickets today. Go to progresswrestling.com forward slash tickets. Uh, get your tickets or tickets today for both shows. Go ahead, go and get the combo tickets. You might as well. You're in town. Um, uh, grab a bit of lunch between shows, but catch the Defy show at 12, the Progress show at 4. Uh, and then the following day, we do have um, AEW All In at Wembley Stadium. And of course, we've got the Wrestle Bus, Mike. That's it. The WrestleBus is coming. And everybody's jumping. It's going to be a party. So if you're anywhere around the country, I know there's a, there's problems with train strikes at the moment. There's problems yeah. with coaches cancelling. Major coach companies cancelling. Uh, you know, group bookings, crazy stuff. But uh, you know, uh, the WrestleBus is all sorted out. It's ready to go from Manchester, Liverpool, Leeds, Cardiff, and Glasgow to get you down to AW All In and to get you back safe. And I believe there's also where uh, there's the Sunday departures taking you straight down to All In and straight back afterwards. Or you can come down on the Saturday and get down and enjoy yeah, progress and defy on the Saturday as well. I would uh, personally get down for the whole weekend and make a make a party of it. You know, enjoy yourselves, guys. And uh, there's all sorts of other stuff going to be going on that weekend as well. I know Progress are hosting a bit of a party. We've hooked on events before in the Wembley Box Park. So uh, anybody could show up at that. And, uh, you know, it's just going to be such an exciting weekend. So uh, can't wait to see you all. Anyone who's traveling for uh, Wrestle Tours to Money in the Bank, can't wait to see you all at that. And of course, then August 26th, we'll see you for Defiant Progress. Clobbering time, baby. And uh, AW as well. It's all happening. Yeah. It is. So uh, get your tickets for the Defy show, the uh, the Splendid and the Vile for It's Clobbering Time, August the 26th, the day before All In. You're going to be there for the weekend. You might as well come and see us at the Electric Ballroom. Just go to progresswrestling.com forward slash tickets to get your combo tickets today. Uh, don't forget to sign up to Progress On Demand to check out day one, day two, and day three of Progress Wrestling Super Strong Star 16. Uh, get your two weeks free trial. So uh, you can watch all three days of Super Strong Style and not spend a penny, not pay a penny. Um, and then, of course, uh, after your two weeks free trial of Best seven ninety nine, you'll spend each month. You can uh, watch back every single Pro Wrestling chapter from day one. And all sorts of fantastic companies from around the world, including TNT Extreme from up in Liverpool and many, many more. Uh, but, uh, Mike... It's been awesome doing these uh, hype show, these recap shows with you over the last few weeks. Looking back at what an extra, looking back at what an extraordinary Super Strong Style tournament it was uh, this year. Um, if I, if I were to ask you, what was your kind of um, kind of number one or two top moments from the three days? What would they be? Oh, I had so many, but uh, what one match I thoroughly enjoyed was uh, I, I just love uh, big some of the stuff Big Demo does. Big Demo versus Lycos, just some of the little bits of banter in that one were amazing. And um, to see Crowley and Maggot interacting again, I just think those guys are just absolutely epic. So uh, yeah, to see the bit of banter with them underneath the ring and everything was uh, was great. Uh, finally, getting to see Bullet and Big Demo interacting yeah. was good. You know, I'm hopeful to see that match take place somewhere in the future. And of course, uh, just the whole story of Lycos coming through the tournament was an amazing, amazing story. And, uh, you know, Nigel added so much to it. Bozzas did a great job ring announcing. You know, we had Ollie Spring holding it together on commentary. DJ King made his commentary debut. We had SoCal Val there. It was just, you know, such such an amazing weekend. We had, we had Simon dialing in on the video screen, setting up his own <laughs> ups and downs battle royal. I just felt like, um, you know, the whole weekend with WXW involved, and everybody who came together and enjoyed it and had a great weekend. I just feel like it was such a special tournament. Of course, um, Will Ospreay and Robbo coming back was huge for the Progress fans. And, uh, you know, I'm, I've seen so many people who were just buzzing about that, the returns of uh, of Rampage and Haskins as well and Nathan Cruz. I think just uh, 
at, after that weekend. It was such a special weekend for progress, and I just hope uh, everyone's gone away with some amazing memories. And, uh, you know, we've set things up for the future as well. Nick Wayne's there, Leon Slater's there, Man Like Del Boy's ready to go and rock the Met stand. <laughs> it's, uh, it, it's all going ahead, and, uh, you know, we, uh, we go forward to August 26th for our next one, and uh, we just hope everyone will be able to join us there for another amazing weekend, and uh, look forward to seeing you there, Jonas. I'll be there. I'll be there for sure. But uh, Mike, as always, thank you very much for being a good friend and an awesome co-host. And uh, to everybody watching at home, thank you very much for tuning in. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button to this video. Don't forget to continue the conversation. Super Strong Style 16. And uh, we'll see you soon, Mike. Thank you very much. One more thing. Go on. Go and watch the tag team match that made event in day two. And go and watch the Clock Strikes Mid that match. They are two matches you've just got to watch. And uh, yeah, you'll thank me for that another time. Man, yeah, yeah. Sign, sign up to Progress <laughs> On Demand and get your tickets for its clobbering time. But uh, Mike, we'll catch you next time, my friend. Thanks, Jonas. See you again soon.